Amid speculation about a potential bid for the presidency, former Vice President Mike Pence is hitting the road to articulate his vision for the future of America. Yesterday, during a book tour stop in Central Florida, he sat down with CBS News's Robert Costa. And their one-on-one -on -one interview, in that one-on-one -on -one interview, rather, he discussed many issues about at both at home and abroad and left the door open for a 2024 White House run. Robert Costa, good morning. Good morning. Great to be with you here in the villages in central Florida. This is a well-known retirement community and a Republican stronghold. We sat down with former Vice President Mike Pence. Top of mind for him was another former Vice President, President Joe Biden, and his handling of documents marked as classified following the CBS News report earlier this week. Do you approve of how the Justice Department has handled this matter so far? No, I don't approve how the Justice Department has handled this matter, and I don't approve how they handled the matter of the classified documents found uh, at Mar-a-Lago. Former Vice President Mike Pence offered sharp criticism of the Justice Department, where a special counsel is now probing how his former boss, former President Donald Trump, handled records marked as classified. The kind of double standard that we see uh, being practiced uh, by the Biden administration in, in the wake of this incident in the Justice Department, I think is exactly what undermines public confidence uh, in our justice system. Biden's lawyer and the White House have said the president's team dealt swiftly with the discovered records. But Republicans like Penn say the current review of the materials by a U.S. attorney might not be enough. Would you like to see a special counsel or not for the Biden papers? I think the Biden papers should be dealt with precisely the same way that President Trump's papers have been dealt with and examined with the same thoroughness and carefulness. But would you acknowledge these aren't equal episodes? I would say, Bob, they're different in degree, but not in kind. Two years after the attack on the Capitol, where he oversaw the congressional certification, Pence reflected on challenges to democracy, both here and abroad including recent riots in Brazil, amid false accusations of a stolen election there. It is evidence that what happens in the United States has repercussions around the world. I, uh, I have no doubt that that tragic day in January of 2021 in this country played some role in sowing uh, the seeds of what's taking place in Brazil. Despite tensions with Trump, Pence continues to move closer to a 2024 bid where winning over Trump voters might be key. How close are you to a final decision on a 2024 run? The truth is that I think, I think we've got time. People around America know the Pences, and so we're, we're gonna take the opportunity of that time. And we're gonna continue to listen, we're gonna continue to pray, and I promise to keep you posted. Pence will soon launch a tour of megachurches, underscoring how he is courting conservative evangelical voters. And he's doing that here in Florida as well, not only the backyard of former President Donald Trump, but of another possible 2024 presidential rival, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. So listen, I'm not saying that everyone who writes a book is planning to run uh, for office in any way, but often that's what happens. People write a book and they go on a book tour. You spoke a little bit more to Pence about a potential presidential run. I want to play some more of that interview. In the months ahead, I'm just going to be listening to the American people. And I, I believe that, um, as President Reagan said, the American people have a funny way of letting you know if they want you to run for president. So former President Trump has already announced his bid. I don't think he's been doing much campaigning, but he says he's going to run again. How much time does Pence have to throw his hat into the ring? It's intriguing because Trump got in in November, uh, but so many Republicans are hovering around the race, but they're not, as you say, jumping into the race at this moment. Pence has been saying for months that he would talk with his family over the holidays and then make a decision. Well, the holiday season has passed, and so this was the first major sit-down Pence has done since the holidays occurred, and it's clear he has not come to a final decision yet. His family doesn't seem to be pushing him away from the idea, but as he said in the interview, he believes he can take time. And this is something that is echoed in my reporting throughout the 2024 field, whether it's Pence or others, 
who are looking at this race, they believe they do have time to wait into the spring, into the summer, maybe even to, into the fall, because their calculation is, broadly speaking, that they don't need to rush into a race and start fighting with former President Trump. Better to just slowly build connections at a grassroots level with voters and donors. So speaking of grassroots and his base, how does his base differ from that of former President Trump? It's a bit more focused, politically speaking, on that conservative evangelical voter. Pence calls his memoir, So Help Me God. He's starting this tour of mega churches hmm. in the coming days. He is someone who is seen as a longtime member of the conservative movement. Trump comes out of nowhere in 2015, 2016 as this nationalist, populist, outsider, combative presidential candidate. Pence is someone who was in the trenches in the House of Representatives for more than a decade in the conservative movement as a talk radio host and a conservative uh, activist and leader in Indiana for a long time. So they have different trajectories in their career, and that creates different political personas for them as they move toward the 2024 nomination race. Trump already formally in, Pence still thinking about it. Uh, Bob Costa, thank you very much.